God, son of a babe. What's up, guys? J2 sent here, just playing a little bit of Battlefield 4. I wanted to find out what happens when Jay puts aside some of his hardware snobbery. I went ahead and built uh, a Kaveri APU system. That's right, this little guy right here is sporting an A10 7850K, and we tried it out in a couple of different co uh, configurations, and we're gonna see just how well it performed uh, when I put away that snobbery and uh, gave it the fair chance that I think it really deserves. It's absolutely no surprise that I am a little bit of a snob when it comes to the hardware parts that I prefer on my gaming PCs. So instead of doing a long drawn out benchmark video where I just throw some numbers up and let you guys figure it all out, I kind of took a unique approach to this video. I'm gonna tell you the frames per second average that I was getting here in Battlefield 4. Sorry guys, I know some of you guys wanna see other games. I choose Battlefield 4 because it's pretty much one of the most demanding games on the market next to Crisis 3, which I don't even own, but anyway. I digress. So what I did was I pretended that I'm going to be a struggling college student, working a minimum wage, part-time, going to school full-time with a very limited budget to see exactly how much performance you can squeeze uh, out of every single dollar. Because I know plenty of you watching th this video right now are shaking your head going, yep, that sounds like me. I'm going to school, I'm making minimum wage, and I've got to go down to the Salvation Army to buy my clothes because I am just poor and broke. Trust me, I've been there. So being the poor college student that I am now, hypothetically, I'm back in school again. It's kind of nice to be young. I found the fountain of youth. It's right here on YouTube. We took the A10 7850K. We used ADATA XPG V2 1600 megahertz RAM overclocked to 2133. We also overclocked the uh, Kaveri A10 to 4.5 gigahertz. We put it on an MSI a88XI AC mini ITX motherboard. We put it in a fractal node 304 and we put, uh, well, I do have a water cooler on here, but you guys could put a Hyper 212 or something around the $25 range. It's gonna cool this APU just fine and it actually does fit in this case. You could fit a Hyper 212 or even a taller cooler in there. And then we put just a basic cheapest one terabyte uh, Barracuda drive we could find in there. It was about 59 bucks. And uh, there you go, that is the entire system coming in at a grand total of $490. That's less than $500, and it's able to play Battlefield 4 at 30 frames per second, pretty much consistent. You would think I had some sort of a frames per second limiter going because it just sat at 30 frames per second the entire time, albeit on low settings. I mean, on medium, we still were able to get 30 frames per second, but it dipped down into the low to mid 20s at times, uh, which I didn't find to be unplayable, but it definitely was noticeable, a little bit of input lag. Now, if you bumped up the iGPU allocated memory to two gigs and boosted the clock a little bit, you got a little bit better performance, but you know, for less than $500, you could still play Battlefield 4 and lesser demanding games without any problems whatsoever. Now what I did next was I assumed, okay, I'm a college student and I got a raise or I got more hours and I want to get more performance, but did I lock myself into a guaranteed bottleneck path? Am I going to be able to upgrade this system without having to be concerned with buying a new CPU and motherboard and all of that? Well, what I did next was I took a uh, R7 250 and we put it in dual graphics mode in here and added the GPU. Now we gained about 10 frames per second more on average for about 40 to 45 frames per second on medium settings. If you put it down to low, it could actually go as high as the 70s. Now we all know on PC, we wanna take advantage of the better uh, graphics performance of PC. So I bumped it up to medium and got more frames per second at the same time. Now it's important to note that dual graphics is not like doubling your performance. It's not, it's allowing your iGPU and a standalone GPU, and in this case, this costs uh, less than $100. In fact, you could get it for uh, $80 different R7 250s on the market, and you now are still under $600 for a gaming PC that has dual graphics capability. Now being the incredibly nice guy and lovable character that I am, I've decided to go ahead and give all of you guys raises. All of you struggling college students, you just got a raise, and now you went out and you bought yourself a brand new R9 270 graphics card. Now it's a discrete graphics card, it's decent on performance, however it does not work in dual graphics. So the question I asked myself was, 
did we lose something now by no longer being able to utilize the internal GPU on our A10? Well, the answer is absolutely not. And that's the part that surprised me. Now, I'm sure the word popping in a lot of our heads right now is bottlenecking. God, I can't believe I just said that word. Now, we all know that that word kind of makes me really upset. So let's go ahead and try and limit its use in this video, okay? You got it? Looking at you back there, fourth row, second seat in from the left, I'm looking at you. Now, because I am running the 14.4 beta drivers here for Mantle, it seems to be working that it's taken a lot of the hardware overhead in the API out of the equation and is allowing the GPU to be more, more fully utilized by the APU. For instance, I'm currently got 85, 89, 87, 86, 90 frames per second going with high settings and two times MSAA running right now on this A10 with the R9 270 overclocked to 1130 megahertz. So I'm actually getting better performance right now on this APU and this graphics card with this API right now, this Mantle API, than I was when I did the last comparison to this video when Mantle first came out on my i5 from Intel. So that goes to show that Mantle is definitely doing something and by moving to a discrete graphics card, we didn't lose any performance and we're not bottlenecking it whatsoever. Okay, okay, I hear you guys. Yeah, well, you know, you, you put a really strong graphics card in there, what's gonna happen? Well, I'm glad you guys are thinking that because now we just got promoted to manager and we bought ourselves a GTX 780. Now, the question is, is the GTX 780 gonna be held back at all by being put on an A10 APU from AMD? Well, let's go ahead and install it right now and I'll let you guys see firsthand what the experience is really like. Now the cool thing about this upgrade path is the amount of money it took to get to the next level. Let's go ahead and talk about that real quick. I know this is kind of turning into a long video, but I think there's a lot of information here that's going to help a lot of you at making these decisions for yourself and turning you into a prosumer instead of being a consumer. If you were to build out just the APU system in the same configuration I did, which could also be cheaper, you could go with a cheaper case and there are cheaper parts that you could buy, it was $490 less than 500 bucks. Now, if you were to put in the R7 250 for dual graphics, you're looking at about $580. So still less than 600 bucks, and you're only looking at $90 more and getting a little bit more performance. Now, building out the R9 270 system allowed us to maintain all the same parts, but we only spent $680 and we got discrete graphics, which was clearly more powerful, allowing us to bump our settings up to high and getting us into the 70 frames per second range. Now, if you wanted to add a little bit extra like going with the uh, SSD in there you're still looking at about $750 by put adding in a 128 terabyte SSD so $750 you'd have yourself an amazing portable build like this power efficient doesn't get super hot and it can go to LAN parties travel with you and have all of your gaming capability and you're not even gonna notice the difference between some sort of a, a higher-end system Man, it, it really blew my mind at just how capable this is. And now I'm understanding what some of the future is gonna be with uh, AMD. And I'm really hoping that they can come and bring some competition here to Intel because it's only gonna help the industry as a whole for everybody to get better parts to compete with each other. And it allows us as consumers to really benefit in the battles. It brings prices down, it brings performance up. That's what we need in this market. And the A10 7850K is certainly something that you should really consider looking at if you're on a very strict budget. And you know what? A month ago, I wouldn't have said that because I didn't have the experience that I have tonight. And the truth of the matter is this mini ITX system that you see back here, not with the 780, I'm gonna put the 270 back in there. That is gonna be my permanent portable rig. I'm not taking that apart. 
I'm very, very happy with its performance. So guys, it's been Jace Two Cents. Obviously, I can't cover everything there is to be about Kaveri. There's just too much information to put into one video. But we are going to be doing an update to this video a little bit in the future by utilizing some faster RAM, some 2400 uh, megahertz RAM, and see just how much performance we can squeeze out of the internal GPU here on this A10. Guys, it's been Jace Two Cents. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Share it with someone that you think it could help. And as always, I will see you in my next video.